When we talk about plant nutrients and look at soil tests, there's a lot of confusion there, especially with something like potassium where it shows up twice on our soil test. Which one do we really want to pay okay, attention but, to? But here's the most important thing to, to mention today. If you're not doing some soil testing on your farm, just let me ask you this question. Think about how many dollars you're spending in terms of overall fertility on the farm. I'm assuming it's thousands, probably hundreds of thousands on many farms. If you knew how to read a soil test and you did some soil testing, do you think there's maybe a chance that you might be able to get higher yields, maybe a little bit better profitability, maybe even save a few dollars on fertilizer? I think absolutely that is true. And one of the most misunderstood nutrients is potassium. We'll tell you why today. Like I said, with that soil test, if you understand how to read it, it shows up twice on there. And that is confusing to a lot of yep. guys. Let's take this field, for example. You look at the parts per million of potassium that shows up on this field, and it's over 300 parts per million in parts of this field. Well, that looks fantastic because if you're looking at a six inch soil test, parts per million of 300, you take that number times two, and you get roughly 600 pounds of potassium that are out per acre in this soil. Well, that's enough to raise a lot of crop, Brian. Yep, it is, but the whole problem is you've got to take a look at base saturation on your farm. And what that means is base saturation is a ratio of five different nutrients to each other. So you've got calcium, magnesium, potassium, as well as sodium and hydrogen. Well, if your potassium percentage is less than 4%, you've got a problem. We want that potassium percentage to be in the 4 to 8% range. So I don't care how many parts per million you've got out here. If you don't have enough in ratio, you're just plain not going to get enough potassium into the plant to maximize yield. Does it mean you're going to have a complete disaster? No but you can't maximize yield unless you're getting that potassium number up there. And when you do plant tissue analysis, you're going to find that you've got plant nutrient deficiencies with potassium. Well, when it comes to potassium and you're looking at that, it varies depending on the types of soil that you're in. Like this soil, for example, is a very heavy soil where we happen to be, and it's very high in magnesium. And that really, really heavy soil makes it tough for your plant to find that potassium that's out there. It's often tied up and unavailable. So it's important to understand with that soil test that you're gonna learn some things. Like if base saturation is low, you say, well, I've got a good chance here that adding potassium is gonna be good, but what's the best way to do it? And can I for sure get it into the plant? How do I know for sure that it did? Well, one of the things with agriculture, it's really unpredictable. It's just like this rain right now when it's been sunny all day. You just, <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. Nothing's out gonna field. dampen our party, Brad. But the thing is, if you've got a soil test, you have an idea of exactly what's really in the soil. And once you understand how to read that, and we're gonna talk a lot more about soil testing here over the next few months. Once you do your soil testing, you know how to read the soil sample, you've got a lot better shot at gaining high yield and doing it profitably on your farm. Well, what I was getting at too is you could do some plant tissue sampling during the summer next season and just see if you got things just right. You could add a little bit more later on if you're a little bit short, or if you see that you're putting a little bit too much on, with potassium, it's not one of those nutrients that leaches away. If you put a few extra pounds on, yeah, you paid a little bit of extra money, but that's the worst penalty you're gonna have. You're gonna have some of that potassium for next year's crop. Maybe you can cut back a little bit next year if you happen to overdo it this time. Okay, so we've talked about how potassium is so important to the plant and how it's often misread on a soil test. Well, once you've determined that you need potassium, how should you put it out there? One of the things we've done on our own farm is to really load some soils up with potassium, and that's great, except for the fact that it costs a lot of money. Well, you know, some people like to spend that extra money on a vacation or something. Brian would prefer <laughs> to spend it on potassium. It's a long-term investment. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, there's a couple different ways, and really on our farm there are two different ways we'll put on potassium. Some of it we'll put on dry potash, and you know what, if you've got a crop that really needs chlorine, for example, potash has chlorine in it. And that's yep. a good way you can get that chlorine out either, there and do your potassium yep, at the same time. And either broadcast it or strip till. We do a lot of strip till now, deep band right over the row, and then we can reduce the amount of fertilizer we're using well, in the strip Well, and till. reduce the amount of tie-up that you get on that yep. potassium. But the other way that we're doing it is we're using liquid shirke. Like on some ground that I just bought, I went all shirke. That's the only potassium source I'm using because it's so highly available. It gets right into the crop. I get the best bang for my buck using a liquid like Shirke right with a planter. Yep, so anyway, there are some options. Certainly, if you're renting ground, we would advise you to not overdo it on fertilizer if you don't know you're gonna have that in a future year. Because remember, 
that when you put that potassium out there in a lot of cases, like potash, you're basically spreading a rock, okay? It does not break down very quickly. We can go out in root pits the following summer after we've put on strip-tilled potash in the fall, and we can very often find some of that potash out there yet. Well, there's no doubt potassium is very important. It's one of the three primary nutrients, so make sure you're getting your fertility program with potassium just right on your farm. One other thing you want to make sure is just right is weed control when it comes to our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get it under control coming up next.